Teach them today? No? Okay. <laughs> um, how's everybody getting along this morning? Good? I must say it's good to be in God's house this morning. Would you agree with me on that? Amen. Good to be in God's house. I uh, <clears throat> go and you keep on over there. Praise God. The songs today have been just uh, blessed to me. And I told Gary in Sunday school, I, uh, we opened this morning with uh, Sweet Air Prayer. And I can't help but every time I think, or that song's sung in this church, Gabe was sitting over there and she'd sing. But she's talking about that robe of flesh, she's going to drop and rise. That's a promise. That's a promise from God, she said. And then uh, boy Gary and, you know, back Leo and then the whole crowd back there are saying, boy, let it get down on that base. It was good stuff, wasn't it? It's good to be in God's house this morning. I'm just praising him this morning to be in his house. And listen, guys, are we ready? I want to talk to you this morning about something. 
when the trap closes. And uh, let's, just, let's just say this morning, if uh, anybody needs a uh, raccoon for dinner today, talk to Debbie because she's caught the second one today in the trap. So that raccoon learned something about a trap too. But listen this morning, you might say this morning, I don't have no mice in my house, but I guarantee you, if you've lived any length of time, you've got a mouse in your house at one time or another. Would you agree with me? Yeah. All right, so that mouse, he's a running around in the house. So what are we going to do? Going to kill it, right? So we're going to take us a trap, right? And we're going to set us a trap. And let me tell you, the best thing to put on it is peanut butter. Do you know that? The very best thing, put it peanut butter. You put cheese all you want to, but he'll, he'll jerk it off. He'll get away. You put peanut butter, though, and here's what he'll do. Uh, he'll think he's slick, right? And he'll come in there, and he'll lick at that stuff. And he'll lick a little bit more, and he'll lick a little bit more. But I guarantee you there's going to be one little bite left on that pen of that trap right there. And when he gets to that bite right there, uh, that trap's going to shut, clam, it's going to slam shut on him, right? It may catch him by the tail. It may catch him by the uh, uh, foot. It may catch him by the head, but it's going to catch him. It's going to catch you. So this morning I want to read to you out of the book of Peter, 2 Peter in the Bible, <clears throat> excuse me, 2 Peter, uh, Peter in 2 and 20. The Bible says, For if after they have escaped the pollution, uh, pollutions of this world, th uh, through the knowledge of the Lord Jesus and Savior Jesus Christ, they are again entangled therein and overcome the latter end is worse with them than from the beginning. As a Christian, we think about what we can do all the time, don't we? I mean, we, we think we can do things. And listen, everybody listen to me right quick. I want to tell you another one right quick. Is, Liam, is your shoes tied already? They stay tied all the time. When yours, yeah, you got a buckle on yours, so that's good. So, see, when you're... When your shoes is tied up like that or you got boots on like Michael over here, uh, so you can slip them shoes on, can't you? So we can get to thinking that we can do these things by ourselves, can't we? And I've told you about Jonah several times. I won't tell you about him again. So he, he would slip his shoe on as long as it was tied. But then one day when the shoe wasn't tied, guess what happened? He put it on and he couldn't tie his shoe. And then Adam looked at him and he said, I thought you... Didn't need no help, Jonah. He said, Day, sometimes I just need a little help. So my point of that is this morning, are you listening? Is this. We may think we can do a whole lot of things. But I assure you today, without Jesus in our life, we can't do nothing. We can't do nothing. We think we can. But listen to this morning. Uh, it's to those that this morning that have known the mercy and the grace and the love and the salvation of Jesus this morning. That's who I'm talking about this morning. That's put yourself in the mouse position this morning. You're nibbling and you're dangling a, a, this little, you know, the world. And think, well, I'll just nibble a little bit of this. It won't be so bad. And I'll just do a little bit of that. It won't be so bad. But I promise you, the trap's set. And the last little piece is going to be there. And you're going to nibble till you're going to find yourself trapped by sin. You're going to find it. Yeah. And then... Know this this morning, that trap's set. Listen, you're going to cry out. That little mouse, when he's caught, they don't do much rackets, you know, most of the time. But if and he could, he's a crying out for some help, ain't he? Amen. Because he's maybe caught by his foot, or maybe he's caught by his tail, but he's caught. Yeah. He ain't going nowhere, and he's in pain. <coughs> and Christian, you'll catch yourself, and you'll cry out to the Lord, I hope you will, because not it's going to be like that mouse. And, oh, it's okay. I've got it, Lord. My foot's just caught, but I've got it. But no, you don't have it. You need his help. Amen. You need his help. I'm saying all this this morning. We've got a navel. you got a belly button. Do you have a belly button? you got a belly button. And I've got a belly button, and she's got a belly button, and he's got a belly button. We all got a belly button. So this morning, we're all in Adam this morning because we all got a belly button. We're all of Adam. But Jesus came to save us. He came to be the one to take us from the line of Adam, that line of sin, and to save us. That's what he come this morning. So this is it. She's about to give up on me, and I'm about done. The saddest thing you're ever going to see as a Christian, 
You want to know what a sad Christian looks like? It's one that's out of church. One's out of fellowship. One's out of prayer. One's out of reading the Bible. And one's out of being in love with Jesus, to be honest with you. It's the saddest thing you ever see. They're trapped. They're in a mess. They need Jesus. You know that? Yeah. Yes, you need Jesus. So this morning, I want to tell you one last thing. Uh, if you were in Sunday school this morning, if you was a grown up, we talked about the model prayer. And Gary did an excellent job with this morning in our Sunday school class, and I'm sure Greg did out here. And in the, we went out of the book of Luke. But I like the one in Matthew because he said there at the end, he said, lead us not in temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine, yours, God, yours is the kingdom and the power, and it's your glory forever. Amen. Amen is his. And if you're toting a log this morning, Mark, have you ever carried a log with your daddy? Picked up a log or anything with your dad? You ever done that? I'm sure Michael has. You know, you get in the firewood and stuff. I promise you, on a log most time, there's going to be a big end. And you don't want the big end. You know why you want the big end? Because the big end's heavy. You want the little end. Well, we may decide we can carry the big end of our salvation in our life, but I promise you that you want Jesus toting the big end because you can't carry it. But if you'll cooperate with him, if you'll live for him and love him, he wants to love us. Trap. It's a trap. All right. Y'all done? Y'all ready? Yes. Well, how about prayer request? What you got? It's children's church. Bible school. It's children's church. Let's ask these guys. They got anything over here? Something over here? Preacher Robbie? Yeah. I tell you what, you guys have been very good, and your dads and moms and grandpas didn't do bad either. <laughs> Y'all ready to pray this morning? It's an honor and blessing to be able to pray to our Lord and Savior this morning. Let's take advantage of that this morning. You ready? Father, we come to you now in the name of Jesus. God, I ask you, Lord, today, would you be with us, Lord, Lord, in a way to be pleased to you. And Father, we just pray today, Lord, that uh, your message, Lord, uh, through Brother Robbie, God, it might be just what we need to hear this very day, Father. I pray for each one of these young people. God, as they travel through life, God, would you help them, uh, lead them not in temptation, but God, deliver them from evil. God, for today, they need your help. And help us as parents, and help us as friends, and help us as church members to be an example of Christ in everything we do before these young people. And God, I pray you'd bless this church. Would you be with us, God? Would you guide and lead us and direct us in the path that you have us to go? And uh, help us, Lord, as we seek the man, God, that you would have for us to preach in this pulpit. We pray, God, for him. Ask him today, would you bless him, God? Encourage him today, God, just to turn his heart towards us. And Father, we're going to pray, Lord, today that if somebody don't know Jesus, God, today, Lord, today, would this be the day. And God, I pray for that one, Lord, that lies falling apart, the trap, God, by sin. I pray, Lord, today, could they see Jesus, God, as a true and living Savior, Lord, this morning. We're just going to pray. And we're going to ask these things today in the name of Jesus. And amen.
so wonderful to be back with you this morning in the house of the Lord and, and uh, just a real privilege to be able to be here this morning. If you have your Bibles, and I hope you do, would you be finding Ephesians or a Philippians, Philippians chapter number three. That was some beautiful singing this morning. We, we just, I just really enjoyed it. It just really blessed my heart this morning. You, you guys are just talented talented as singers this morning and it's just a real privilege to be able to come and worship with you and to hear that beautiful singing I really look forward to that this morning and and it didn't disappoint you know and it's just you can just really tell and just really sense and this is what I prayed for all week that the spirit of God would just fill this place and boy is he making his presence known this morning the spirit of God is in the house this morning and I am so thankful for that. So thankful. And I just, again, I just can't thank you enough for the opportunity to be able to come this morning and uh, worship with you folks and how you just made me and my family feel so welcome. We really appreciate that. This morning, a lot of times in life we set goals. We dream to be something. We we dream to be somebody, to be the absolutely the best that we can possibly be. And I think that every one of us, seemingly as a child, were asked the question of what we wanted to be when we grew up. Some of us probably had maybe maybe had the the ideal to, to be a doctor. Or, or possibly even a, a lawyer. I, I don't ever recall uh, myself ever dreaming of, of wanting to go to school for most of my life <laughs> to earn a doctorate degree. If I did say that, it was probably just because there possibility could have been a lot of money involved in, in those respective positions. Uh, but we dream of being something. A lot of kids, and even my boys, they, they may even dream of, of being a professional athlete as they grow up. We have goals and dreams. Most of us set goals in life to accomplish. We set these goals to better ourselves. As Christians, we, we set goals. We want to read the Bible more. We want to pray more. We want to attend church or maybe attend Sunday school on a more regular basis. But what about setting the goal of reaching full spiritual maturity and being fully conformed to the image of Jesus Christ? Is that one of our goals? As we're going to see in the scripture this morning, that was one of Paul's goals. At any rate, as as a human, we set goals and we get goals in our minds and we set parameters on how we're going to accomplish these goals in life. And when we set the goal, we have it in our mind to take whatever it amounts to, that's the direction we're heading in, and that's the direction that we're going to go in until we accomplish that goal. And no matter what may come in our way, we are going to continue on that path. We're going to strive for it. We work hard for it. And we're not going to allow anything to distract us. Friends, we may struggle along the way. We may have failures. And even though we may get down and dwell sometimes on the disappointments that, we, that life brings upon us, we must keep going forward to reach our goal. No matter what, we must press on. This text this morning reveals that as a child of the living God, our focus should rest in the heavenly prize. Jesus Christ has graciously reached out for us and we must not allow any circumstance to stand in the way of us reaching the finish line of faith and receiving the heavenly prize. 
If it is to where you can this morning, I want to invite you to stand as we read the text. In Philippians chapter number 3, we're going to be reading verses 12 through 16. The Apostle Paul says, Not as though I had already attained, either were already perfect, but I follow after, if that I may apprehend that for which also I am apprehended of Christ Jesus. Brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth unto those things which are before. I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. Let us therefore as many as be perfect be thus minded. And if in anything you be otherwise minded, God shall reveal even this unto you. Nevertheless, whereto we have already attained, let us walk by the same rule Let us mind the same thing. Father, we just come to you this morning. We thank you for the privilege to be in your house this morning. And I pray, Lord, that you just add your blessings upon the Word this morning. God, that you and your Spirit would just be upon me and you just speak through me, Lord, to your people. And may we be further along and advanced in, Lord, in the knowledge and our relationship with you. Again, we thank you and we praise you. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Thank you. And you may be seated. In view of this text this morning, there are three certainties that we can glean from the Apostle Paul's life that we can relate to our own walk with Christ. And the first truth that we can see is that we realize our condition. Look with me back at verse 12. Paul says, Not as though I had already attained, either were already perfect, But I follow after, if that I may apprehend, that for which also I am apprehended of Christ Jesus. I am apprehended of Christ Jesus. If you look back at the beginning of the chapter, Paul mentions just how he used to be by only being interested in his own appearance. And he held a pretty impressive list of credentials. He was born a legitimate birth. The stock of Israel. He was circumcised the eighth day. He was of the tribe of Benjamin, a strict and devout follower to God's law, a Hebrew of the Hebrews, a fiery defender of the purity of his religion, all the way to the point of persecuting the church. He was a meticulous observer of all of God's law. Paul had everything going for him. These credentials were so special to him and they were so special to the Jews. But however, on the road to Damascus one day when Paul was traveling to go and persecute some true true Christians and throw them into prison, Paul had an encounter with the Lord Jesus Christ. On the way, God began to deal with Paul. Saul at this time, Paul at this time, he met Christ. Paul met the Savior of the world, the only begotten one of the Father. And Christ reached down and grabbed Paul and saved his soul. And once Paul's soul was saved, his life changed forever. His condition changed from a lost state to a saved state. And everything that Paul had lived for, all the things that he thought were so great, all the things that he thought were so important, he wiped them away. Paul could, to Paul, nothing could compare to the privilege of knowing the Lord Jesus Christ. He considered everything else in his life up to this point insignificant. Paul, when he was saved, his condition changed and he set out to achieve a new set of goals. His desires changed and Paul set out to embrace Christ because Christ had embraced him. He gave up all that old inferior stuff so that he could reach a new set of goals. To know Christ personally. What a privilege. What a privilege that we have to know 
the one true living and only God there is, the God of all creation, the God who created all of this that we see, the God who created us, the God who created you, such a precious being. And God wants you to have a personal relationship with Him. All those inferior things, Paul said, I give it away to know Christ personally, to walk with Him. As you've already said this morning, to pray with Him, to talk with Him, and spend time with Him. Brings back such a a precious hymn. I remember from my childhood, in the garden, I walk through the garden alone. And I walk with Him and I talk with Him. What a precious time. And Paul says, I give it up to know Christ personally. To experience the power of His resurrection. To be a partner in His suffering. To go all the way to the point of death itself. If there was any way that Paul could reach the resurrection, he wanted to be a part of it. Paul wanted to do whatever it took for him to be resurrected from the dead. And it was his new goal to reach the highest calling of God by being resurrected by God's glorious power. And that ought to get us excited. That should be our goal. If you're saved, Christ has a hold on you and He's not letting go. Your condition may have changed. And I hope that it has changed. You have a new goal to achieve. God wants to better you. He wants to give you life. The abundant life. Eternal life. And it all begins at the moment of salvation through faith and faith alone. And when you are saved, you take a step up. And we now are headed to the highest calling of God through Jesus Christ. Look back with me again at verse 12. Paul says, Not as though I had already attained, neither were already perfect. Paul says, Just because Christ has a hold on me, Paul did not automatically mean that he had already arrived to the point of perfection. Paul had not attained the goal of being all that Christ wanted him to be. Paul says, I'm not saying that I've already achieved this goal. I'm not there yet. I've not arrived at that point. I don't have it all together yet. Paul knew in his mind that he had not reached the end of the goal because he was not yet perfect. He had not been fully conformed to the image of Jesus Christ. There was still in his mind a work to be done. And I think this is a big misconception when it comes to Christians today. Many think just because we are Christians that we are perfect and that we do no wrong. We're put under a microscope, if you will, and every fault that we have is brought out. But listen, church, we're not perfect. We still, like Paul, we're still going to struggle. We're still going to fall down. We're still going to have failures. Do you struggle? Just because your condition has changed and we are saved does not mean that we don't have struggles. Listen, let me get personal with you, if you will. We have an enemy who loves to do nothing more than get us in a position in which we fall for his deceptions. And I fail. Friends, I at times let my guard down and Satan attacks and the next thing you know, I've sinned. I'm not perfect. Sometimes it may just be something as simple as someone saying something to me and away may go my thoughts. And I let my guard down. This gives an open door of Satan to attack me and then the next thing you know, I've had a slip of the tongue. I've said something that I shouldn't have said. I struggle. I'm not perfect. I've not reached that point. The goal of being fully like Christ. I struggle and I sin and I still must get down on my knees and confess to Almighty God I have sinned against Him and ask God to forgive me. And He does because God is faithful and He is just and He promises in His Word that if we will confess He is faithful and just to cleanse me and forgive me of all my unrighteousness. Do you struggle? Paul did. And he realized his condition of not yet being fully like Christ. And we're going to have times of struggle as we continue to walk on this side of eternity. 
we're going to continue to have disappointments. But even though we may struggle in our walk as children of the living God, we must press on. We must press on. We must keep reaching out for Christ. We, cha- we charge on to gain anything and everything that Jesus Christ has in store for us. Striving, pursuing, grasping, and working hard towards the day when we will finally be all that Christ saved us for and wants us to be. He is. And in a twinkling of an eye, we will be fully and completely changed to be just like Him. But along the way, we're going to have times of struggle. Take to the time of prayer, for instance. Do you struggle in prayer? Do you ever get frustrated when you're trying to pray? I mean, it, you know, I do. My thoughts sometimes wander. My thoughts sometimes they get cloudy. Just like this morning, coming to the mountain, they get a little bit foggy, right? We have times of fog. This in the middle of prayer. I mean, I'm speaking to God, making my intercessions for you and for my wife and for my children and for the youth of greater vision and for for all the saints. And all of a sudden, my thoughts just start to wander. And the devil loves for that to happen. He loves for me to get my focus off. And he loves to cause confusion for you and for me. And so that we start to drift away and start thinking upon other things. He loves to put so many things in our life, so many obstacles in our way, so many obstacles at work, so many struggles in the church, so many struggles within our family. And he likes to deceive us into struggles and spending and struggling to spend time with God in prayer. And when you are in the middle of prayer, He wants to throw those things back up. Think about this. Remember this. Remember that. So you'll stop talking to God. He loves to get our focus off. He loves to cause confusion. He loves that when I get up early in the morning to have my prayer time, that the words just won't come because I start thinking on other things. And it happens in a split second. And we're left to wonder sometimes what just happened. I mean, I went from talking to God to now, it's kind of something just thinking about my day. Listen, we're going to struggle in prayer. Our thoughts are going to wander. I don't have the most powerful prayer life that I desire to have. I don't always know what to say. But you know, it's not about impressing God with my words. It's not about, I'm not there in that middle of that prayer time to impress God. I don't have to impress God. God knows my struggles. He knows my weaknesses. He knows my failures. He knows my faults. My problem isn't that I should get focused on what I'm not doing. My my focus just means I should just stick with it and keep pressing on in prayer. I'm going to struggle. I can't impress God. I'm just a lowly servant who struggles with the words to say. And half the time, sometimes my prayers don't even make sense. But I must press on. I don't let it stop me from praying. I can't let it stop me from praying. I may get frustrated in why I can't pray. I may even get a little angry with myself because I'm, I'm not focused on having that powerful, powerful prayer life. But I press on. I keep praying and I keep reaching for Christ who reached out for me with everything that He had. We must press on, church. And I know it's hard. I know it's hard for us to realize our condition of not being perfect. We're Baptists, right? Yeah. Yeah. It's okay. Because God knows us. And God loves us. He loves us so much that He came when we were sinners and died for us in our place. We must press on, church. No matter what, we must press on. Jesus Christ has graciously reached out for us and we must not allow any circumstance to stand in the way of us reaching the finish line of faith and receiving the heavenly prize. 
This brings us to our second truth that we can glean from this text. We realize our course. Look with me at verse number 13. Paul says, Brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth unto those things which are before. Brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended. Paul did not consider himself to have completed the course and being fully conformed to the full image of Jesus Christ. He says, I've not achieved it. I've not arrived. I have not taken hold of. I have not fully grasped. I'm not an expert. But this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth into those things which are before me. You ever get tired of dealing with the past? You ever get tired of... Of, of those things, especially the bad things that we've experienced that just keep coming up, right? We all do. I just absolutely despise how the devil throws things of the past right back into my face. Remember how you were. Remember when you did this. Remember this. Remember that. I don't like it. He brings feelings of depression, feelings of oppression upon us, and feelings of downright worthlessness, feelings of, uh, of uselessness and rejection. And He loves nothing more than bring those emotional pitfalls on us. He loves to make me feel like I'm not fit to be a child of God or for the service of God. He tries to make me feel like everybody just looks at me and I think they're thinking that I'm just some kind of a criminal, like they know my, my faults and they know my failures. I feel like no one wants anything to do with me. This is just what the devil loves to do to me and most everyone else who is living for God. He wants to make you feel this way. He wants to beat you down. He wants to destroy you on the inside. He loves to depress you. He loves to make you feel alone. And he wants nothing more to separate you from God, family, fellow brothers and sisters, friends, and the like. I would say he wants to separate you from the world, but he is of the world. And if any way possible he can get you to fall into the ways of the world, those traps, he will do it. He loves that. He wants us to fall back into the past. But listen, friends, He's not your master if you are saved. The cross has rendered Him powerless. He only has as much power as we will allow Him to take in our lives. And believe me, He will take every bit of it if He give Him opportunity. All of us have a past. Paul had a past. This man stood by as a witness And as the witnesses laid their clothing at his feet and he watched as they stoned Stephen to death. Now Paul, who was Saul at the time, consented to his death. And you know those vivid memories kept repeating themselves in his mind. And I'm sure Paul especially kept hearing over and over again Stephen saying, Lord, do not charge them with this sin. And I believe this is one one instance that God used to really reel with Paul and to bring him to the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ when Christ saved his soul. This is when Paul's condition changed and then this is when his course changed. You see, folks, when we were baptized, we were baptized into the death of Jesus Christ. And just as Christ was raised up by the glorious power of God the Father, we too have been raised up in Christ to a new life. Romans 6, 6 says, For we know that our old self was crucified with Him. That means your past is gone. Your past is wiped away. The old man is dead. Robbie Stone of old died at the age of 13 at an altar up at New Light Baptist Church number 2 in Wilbar. And the new man that you see today is the man created by God Almighty. A new man, a new creation. That's what God brings us to be. The past is dead, my friends. And there's thou no condemnation that hangs over any of those who are in Jesus Christ. I want to read some lyrics of a song to you. It's a song entitled Flawless. And it says, No matter the bumps, no matter the bruises, no matter the scars, still the truth is the cross has made you flawless. No matter the hurt, 
or how deep the wound is, no matter the pain, still the truth is the cross has made you flawless. Could it possibly be that we simply can't believe that this unconditional kind of love would be enough to take a filthy wretch like this and wrap him up in righteousness? But that's exactly what he did. Take a breath, smile and say, right here, right now, I'm okay because the cross was enough. And that is just what God's amazing grace does for each and every single person who comes to Him in faith. He remembers our sins no more. The past is gone forever. And He promises to remember our sins no more as far as the east is from the west. He remembers our sins no more. The past is gone. The past is forgotten in the eyes of God. And we need to be running, stretching, pursuing the goal with everything that we have with inside of us. Staying focused on the future. The goal of reaching heaven. Being completely transformed to be just like Christ. And no circumstance, not even the past, can stand in our way. Listen friends, this old body will pass away. There will be no more struggles with the flesh. No more dealing with Satan. No more sickness. No more disease. No more sorrows. No more times of feeling in despair. Our citizenship is in heaven. And I'm eagerly waiting for the return of my Savior Lord Jesus Christ. Christ. And when He appears, He will transform this lowly body and it will be conformed to His glorious body. And then we will be perfect and then we will be made just like Him. No more struggles. No more past. Our citizenship is with Him. No matter what, we must press on. Jesus Christ has graciously reached out for us. And we must not allow any circumstance to stand in the way of reaching the finish line of faith and receiving the heavenly prize. This brings me to our third and final point. We realize our commitment. Look back with me at verses 15 and 16. Paul says, Let us therefore, as many as be perfect, be thus minded. And if anything... Ye be otherwise minded, God shall reveal even this unto you. Nevertheless, whereto we have already attained, let us walk by the same rule, let us mind the same thing. Let us, therefore as many as be perfect, be thus minded. Lastly, Paul encourages the believers at Philippi to keep focused on the goal of reaching the heavenly prize and becoming everything that God wants us to be. That they continue to strive, that they continue to pursue, that they continue to reach by following in the truth of living up to the standard they have already learned. Leaving the past completely behind and letting God lead them into an attitude to keep going forward in the light with ambition. You know why horses wear blinders? Horses have their eyes at the sides of their heads, which indicates that they're, they're hunted in nature, similar to a rabbit, for example, as opposed to the hunter such as, such as a cat. So horses have peripheral vision, which means they can end up running off course unless they are made to remain focused committed to what's in front of them. Blinders are, are small squares of firm leather that attach to the bridle at the side of the horse's head. Some say that, that blinders were invented when a, when a preacher had a wager with one of his friends. And that preacher bet that the horse could walk up the stairs in his home and the horse did this without any problem at all. But when he tried to coax the horse down again, it wouldn't budge. So the preacher covered the horse's head and led him down. And he realized that covering all or part of the horse's vision could encourage the horse to take chances it would not normally take. Just like the horse, if we keep looking back and dwelling in the past, we're going to continually run off course and be out of focus upon reaching the finish line of faith and reaching the goal of the heavenly prize. Listen. 
The blood of Jesus Christ is our blinders. When Christ shed His blood upon the cross, it covered all of our past failures and all of our past disappointments. And we have nothing but the future of the heavenly calling in front of us. So let us trust in this truth and keep focused by looking forward and moving forward in spiritual maturity reaching the finish line in full faith. No matter what, church, we must press on. No matter what, we must press on. We're going to stand and sing a hymn of invitation this morning. And I want to ask you this morning, as as Paul so confidently stated in this text that he was apprehended by Christ Jesus And he knew that his course had changed from a lost condition to a saved condition by the grace of God through through Christ. Are you certain this morning that your condition has changed? Are you certain this morning that if you closed your eyes tonight, that when you opened your eyes that you would be in the presence of the Lord. Can you say that with confidence this morning? Death is oh so near. Don't go away from this place unless you know with absolute assurance that you, just like Paul, have considered all of that inferior stuff, all the things that you've built your life upon, that you consider it just as Paul did as garbage and you're throwing it out to know Christ personally and to have a relationship with Him. It is worth it. There is nothing more valuable than to have a personal relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. So this morning, are you sure your your course has changed? Maybe this morning, past has been dragging you down. You've gotten off course and out of focus on pursuing Christ. I want to encourage you this morning. God is a loving God, a forgiving God. He can help you get right back on track. Listen, friends, I get off course too. I do. I might be called to be a minister of God, but I still get off course. That's just the human nature in us. But God will help us. If we'll just reach out to Him, God will help us get our focus back and help us get back on track. He'll help us to pray. He'll help us to read our Bibles. He'll help us to come and fellowship and worship together. He can mend that relationship with Himself. It is awesome. He is awesome. If God's dealing with you this morning on these things, move forward this morning with Him. Come this morning. I will pray with you. I'm sure others in this church will pray with you. If you don't, just do it right there at your seat. Just reach out to God. Call out to God. Deal with whatever God is dealing with you about. Do you come this morning as we stand and as we sing this morning. Whatever the Lord is laying upon your hearts, you deal. You come with Him and deal with Him.